In today's tutorial, we're going to be exploring server-side file editing using PHP's built-in file editing functions. The use of small server-side text files offers a great lightweight alternative to databases for small-scale login systems or application configuration files. We're going to make use of the following functions. fopen, fread, fgets, fwrite, and fclose. The specific BTEC Unit 27 criteria we'll be addressing in this tutorial is M2, and this requires us to edit the content of a text file on a web server using web server scripting. The file open function will either open an existing file or create a new file if the file does not exist. We need to give the file a name, so on line 2 we assign a string value, username.txt, to the variable myfile. On line 3, fopen takes two arguments. The first is the name of the text file we wish to edit, and the second sets the file permission, in this case set to R, which means that the file will be opened for reading only. The file is assigned to the variable file handle, which we'll be able to use later when we begin editing the text file. The fopen read only switch, R, opens the file at the beginning, ready for reading. The W switch opens the file ready for writing, so that we can write new data to the file. Like the read switch, the write switch opens the file at the beginning. Opening a file for writing needs careful handling though, because it will overwrite existing data. The append switch A is very similar to the write switch. The main difference is that instead of opening the file at the beginning and writing over existing data, the append switch opens the file at the end and writes new lines of data in addition to the existing data. So we can see here I've created a simple text file, usernames.txt, and that just has a list of five potential usernames on there, um, and that's been saved into the same folder as my PHP scripts. So if we have a look now at the read function, um, I prepared a script here before, and you can see that lines two and three are identical to the file we were looking at before, the fopen function. And you can see that on line three, we're opening the file for reading with the R switch. So line four is a new line of code. Here we're using the fread function, and that takes two arguments. The first argument is the file itself, the file handle that we created, or the returned open file. And the second argument is the amount of data that we want to return. Here it's going to return the first 12 characters uh, from that file. And then finally on line 5, we're echoing back uh, the data so that we can see it printed to screen. So if we run this now, you can see it returns the first 12 characters, which in fact is the first name on the list. Now obviously this is fine if we know how many characters we want to return, but if we don't know the size of the file and we want to return everything from there, then we've got a bit of a dilemma. Fortunately, PHP has a function called file size, which does exactly what it says on the tin. It returns the file size of a given file. So if we change the 12 now to file size, it's a function, so we open a curve brace and the name of the file is my file, that's the variable we've got on line 2 there. It's just one argument taken. And that should return the number of characters in the file. And this time, our read function should return all of the entries on that list. Let me just refresh that. And there we have all of the entries. Notice though that um, it's reading it, it doesn't read new lines in, it's just reading all of the data and displaying it as one single string, so there's, there's no gap between the names. Obviously this is quite useful if we want to gather all of the data, but if we want to gather the data one line at a time and we don't know the length of the line, we need another function, and that's where the fgets function comes in, which we'll look at next. So I've created a new PHP script here. This is called readline.php, and this will be making use of the fgets function. Again, lines two and three are identical to before. And on line three, 
Instead of the f read, we're now using f gets, and that just takes one argument, and that's the file handle. Uh, you'll see that on line two, we're, line three, sorry, we're still opening the file as read only. And on line five, we're echoing back the data from the fgets function. So this should just return the first line. And if we just visit there now, let's refresh that. You can see it just returns the first name. Um, so, so far it's no, not really any different from the uh, read function. But what we can now do is because the file is open, um, each successive uh, command or edit that we do on that line moves the pointer. So if I copy this now and paste it onto the next line, you can see that we're using fgets twice, having first opened the file. So this now should return the first two lines. And again, if we just refresh, we now have the first two names on the list. Um, this, the fgets function is very useful if we're wanting to search through a, a long list of usernames, for example, to find a particular username. And you might want to consider how you could set up some kind of loop structure to search through the full text file. So now we're going to create a script that adds new users to the end of our existing list. Here's our original list with five names on. And we have a new script here called write.php. You'll see that lines two and three are almost identical to the uh, last script we created. The only difference is that on line three, the second argument for fopen is the append switch or a switch. This is because I want to add the new users at the end of the file and not to write over existing users. On line four, we've created a string, Danny Welbeck, and assigned that to a new variable called new name. And you'll notice at the end of the string, there's a slash n character. This is the new line character, and this ensures that we move the pointer onto the next line. And then finally, on line five, we have the fwrite function, which takes two arguments. It takes the file handle to our open file, and it takes the new name string. So if we run this now, brush that, and we'll close down our username text and open it again just to see. The new name has been added. And now we can see on line six, Danny Welbeck has been added. Finally, when we've finished all of our editing, it's always a good idea to finish the script with an fclose statement. This closes the file so that when we open it again for further use, it opens at the right place. So all of our editing scripts should end with a close statement. And again, it's just the one argument, the file handle. So in this tutorial, we've seen just how easy it is to create PHP scripts to edit text files on the web server. Some things to consider for the future if you were building a login system, then obviously the fgets function is a good way of finding individual users within your list. You'd need to embed this within a while loop, and you might want to look up other file handling functions on the PHP manual. In particular, the feof function, which is the end of file function. This can be used as a way of checking when you're needing to test for the end of a loop.